Hello, my name is Sognia Zakhariev and I'm a senior artist at Ubisoft. Uh, but first of all, I'm going to briefly talk to you about my experience in the industry, what uh, type of franchises I've uh, worked on and the type of work I was involved in. Um, I've been in the game industry for over 10 years now and I've been involved with uh, multiple uh, Assassin's Creed titles, uh, including Black Flag, Syndicate, Origins, and the latest uh, Origins DLC called Curse of the Pharaohs. I've also worked on The Division, uh, which I'm going to briefly touch on uh, in a minute. Um, for more details and breakdowns of my work, you can just uh, visit my art station. I've included a lot of videos and uh, breakdowns of my approach to uh, getting a scene to this uh, final AAA quality that uh, this franchise is associated with. So in this chapter I would like to tell you what kind of project we're going to create, uh, what's our main inspiration and what's our final goal. Um, in short, we are going to be uh, creating a project in Unreal based on the Hogwarts castle in the Harry Potter franchise and in particular a classroom that the students attend to and that is quite popular thanks to all the movies that you've, some of you have probably seen. Uh, this is just an example a shot of the front part of the classroom and the idea is that we're going to create a sort of a hybrid room between this reference right here and other rooms from the castle basically trying to create a much more interesting and dynamic environment inside of Unreal which will also be adapted to gameplay and proper movement of the character in first person view. So I'm just going to go through some of the images that will inspire us and I will show you some of the type of props that we are going to create like for example this uh, the blackboard on the right, uh, the podium in the middle and all the little trinkets and props that you see scattered around. Um, basically uh, this is just another uh, view of the same classroom. Um, we are going to change the shape of this environment again to adapt it to as I said earlier uh, gameplay and we're going to change the proportions as well and maybe the placement of uh, most of the objects in the room just to make it a bit more interesting because as you can imagine this uh, this was adapted to a movie media uh, and we are actually trying to create a game environment and this is just more inspiration we're going to create all of this stuff like the desks and even the books on top uh, the feathers basically try to create an environment that looks believable and fits right into that uh, universe which is uh, something that you really need to master as an artist being able to work from reference or concept art and translate this uh, through your uh, skills into your environment and that's just a bit uh, more examples of the same thing you can see a lot lots of variations in, in terms of materials like for example the magnifying glass on the ceiling this is again something that we're going to make and this gives us an opportunity to create different types of shaders that behave in very different ways and it will basically allow you to master shaders in Unreal and create whatever you want based on your uh, target and your imagination. Um, again, we want to add a lot of history to this environment like the variation in roughness uh, on the desks and uh, other surfaces as well all the little cracks uh, of time um, all the dusty bits uh, in areas where the students don't go and are basically untouched and all of these uh, piles of books that those are kind of iconic for uh, this type of fantasy environment and also we are going to uh, fill this uh, room with other um, assets and gadgets like I said earlier because for example this is reference from another room 
but you can see all the different uh, types of props and materials that will make our environment much more interesting if we put them in there and it will basically tell uh, the story of this room and that the students are maybe learning how to make potions and this room has been there for centuries and you can see all the cobwebs and all the dust and the worn down surfaces and that's just another example with the uh, drones and again a variation of props and materials throughout the room this is just another uh, angle of the same room we are going to uh, make sure that we follow so, some of these iconic shapes on the sides of the wooden beams that support the ceiling they are going to be a vital part of our composition and framing the shot so that it looks really well from all angles and again lots of uh, little trinkets and objects that we're going to use um, this is a great example of how we can um, connect the environment to maybe a character inside the scene. For example, I'm going to show you how to create an owl, which is again very iconic for this franchise. And you have some of the main characters that are actually birds or owls in particular, like Hedwig. You can see that there is a phoenix on the blackboard and Maybe we can uh, turn our environment into a classroom where a teacher is currently teaching something about owls and we can have the actual creature right next to the blackboard and maybe a schematic of the bird and uh, like a list of its magic abilities on the blackboard. Just trying to tell a story through every piece of the environment. And I'm going to uh, show you all of these uh, images, but I'm also going to include them so that you can have full access to all the reference materials that I'm going to use for inspiration. But I also encourage you to actually look for your own reference uh, and learn how to pick the best images uh, from Google and it, the reference is almost never enough. I mean, you can you can always get more images and inspiration and it is a good really good way and an important uh, way to start a project so that you really know where you're going and what's your final goal and from that you can make a list of assets you can uh, plan the proportions of the whole uh, environment and so on Again, that's uh, another room from the castle that we're just going to get some bits and pieces from it uh, in order to create our hybrid room. And same thing here. Again, lots of little props that are going to add a lot of history to uh, our room. And this type of props like the quadrons on top of the table will give us a chance to um, maybe work with some particles like create some sort of steam or smoke on top of them I'm going to show you how to create this and also this type of environments will let us um, create uh, other particle systems like dust and other stuff that basically tells you what kind of room you're in and how well that room is maintained and it will overall create a much more dynamic atmosphere and it will really bring it to life and uh, you can see again a, a close-up of some of those props that we're going to create like all the worn down uh, wood and uh, old books and stuff like that uh, this is an overview of the room which is kind of close to what we're going for in the end uh, again all these interesting uh, trinkets and magnifying glasses on the ceiling they will be a really interesting challenge to create especially material wise uh, creating convincing glass in uh, real time is kind of a challenge but I'm going to show you how to do it and this will add a lot of, of believability to, to the environment again lots of uh, other props and variation of the same assets and uh, again these type of surfaces will uh, really allow us to create a variety of textures and uh, I'll show you how to blend them properly in order to 
create a believable material like for example the the top of the table here and you can see how much story it tells even by the wear and tears or the the dust and stuff like that and this is just a rough um, block out uh, don't don't treat this as a concept art it's basically a block out of the the scale of the environment and it's pretty bare right now but it's just an example of the basically the the scale of the room and it will help us to kind of plan ahead and let us uh, start the block out with a good foundation and then we're going to move from there uh, maybe expand this uh, place and of course like i said fill it up with tons of objects that will really make it look alive and in the next chapter i'm going to show you how to do a block out of this uh, environment and how to set up your uh, 3ds max and unreal